about two minutes after. Yeah, it's been two minutes. All right, guys, thanks for jumping on, all of you that were able to make it. I uh, understand everybody's busy, so uh, we, we have a much larger committee than this, and there's lots of folks that weren't able to get on, but that's okay. We will still get in touch with everyone, and we're recording, and uh, we're going to do a follow-up email, so um, there will be plenty of ways to folks, for folks to get involved. Uh, welcome, welcome to, we haven't met in a while, so it's good to see everyone's uh, smiling faces. Um, we wanted to check in, and I'm going to turn it over to Ariel here in a second, but we wanted to check in because as we're making progress, which we're making a lot of progress on revamping all the education that ASCA puts out, um, we also have come up with a lot of areas where we need assistance. And the more hands on deck, we thought, you know, you guys have volunteered. So if we can put you to work um, on various things, and some of you have already done a lot already, but if we can put you to work on some of these uh, items that you see here on the agenda, then uh, we can get a lot more done in a shorter time frame, and it would be all the better for all the coaches and our members out there. I just want to say, uh, back up a second and say thank you to all of you who have been so helpful as we were able to get up and running finally our levels one through five certification courses. That was an enormous lift and also special thanks to Ariel who spearheaded all that and um, just was intricately involved in every single one of those levels and pulling all the pieces together and writing some of it as well um, and pulling all the videos together. And um, so right now, just update, uh, we do have all five levels on our website available for sale. Um, so level one, as you know, is foundations and many of our education committee members beta tested both levels one and level two already. We worked out a lot of kinks that way. It was very, very helpful. Level four and level five are webinar based. Um, that's a whole new concept for ASCA certification courses. But, um, so when you sign up for level four or for level five, you, uh, get information about, um, joining our, one of our webinars that will be putting on monthly for each of the levels. We'll be doing two a month. So for the most part, a level four or a level five, for the most part will be offered every month. It starts this, this month, next week, next Wednesday, I do believe is the very first one with Kathleen Prindle doing governance and leadership for level four. Um, and uh, so anyway, that those you that's what, how you uh, accomplish those courses and pass those courses is you attend uh, either two or three of the webinars that are going to be offered on various topics within either leadership for level four or administration for level five. And, um, and then you do some work at the end, and that's how you get those certification courses. And as you know, there's other requirements to get the certification, but that's how you accomplish the course. So then there's level three, which is the most recent one to get posted. And it is um, a combination of, I don't know, probably eight, nine, 10 coaches contributed yeah. to, yeah, to that level. Amazing work. Mike Murray and Mo wrote the text for that course. Uh, and then, like I said, like eight or not, eight to 10 coaches recorded various segments of it to create the whole online course. Um, so as Ariel will tell you, like that's one where we still could use some beta testers to try to work out the kinks. The cool part about our new learning management system is that we can make changes at any time. It's not like we posted it and it's a big deal to redo the whole course um, if there's any little tweak or anything that we need to do. It's the, the system is set up in a way where we could go in and replace a video. We can make any little tweaks about uh, if there's a con like switch them or add something or anything. Um, it's very easy to do. And that is our plan uh, that we will be constantly updating that material uh, as we go, which will, which will be a big difference from the past when, you know, like the, the courses that we replaced had, I don't know, I think they were at least 10 years old and many of them very dated as far as the information um, or just, you know, how they were presented. So we won't fall into that trap again. We will, with our new technology, be able to keep it fresh, keep it current um, and help coaches stay on top of whatever the latest thing is that's coming out or whatever the latest research or data is um, for practices out there that are being successful. Um, 
Okay, so that is kind of the introduction. Um, we also, uh, you know, are doing a variety of other courses, uh, which we'll talk about, but I'm just going to stop here for a second and ask if anybody has any questions or input before I turn it over to, to kind of have Ariel go through the agenda. Did, Jen, did you say you needed more beta testers for level three or yes. you're good? Yes, we do. Level three is the one that we still need beta testers for. And you'll see that's on the agenda here for item three. So Ariel's going to talk about if you're interested in that, how you can volunteer for that. Okay. Yep. Cool. Any other questions before we move on? Okay. All right, Ariel, you want to take it away? I can try to. So it's uh, nice to virtually meet all of you. I think at this point, I don't think I've actually been on an education committee call at this point. So if I haven't met you in person, great to meet you virtually. Looking forward to working with you. Um, like Jen said, you know, the more hands that we can get involved, the better. Um, unfortunately, I've only got two, so I can't really do much more than what I'm doing now. Um, and since we have this committee, I figured, well, why not reach out, see what we can do, see how we can get some help. So first of all, um, I'm sure you guys have all seen the doc talks that are posted on the website. Um, up in Silver Oak Clinic, I had one with Jen and Amelia Strother on the front page. So hopefully you did take a couple minutes to see that. But basically our doc talks, if you don't know what they are, they are anywhere from five minute interviews to 30 minute interviews. Although I'd like to keep them around 15 to 20 minutes. And basically what I'm looking for is two things. I'm looking for A, coaches who would like to do the interviews and B, coaches to be interviewed. So unfortunately, like I said, I'm a one person, but I'm looking for other people who would love to get on camera, um, go out there, interview coaches. They can be big name coaches. They can be smaller coaches. I'm open to just about any idea, but as long as you make the content in the interview relevant to the ASCA members, that is what I would be asking for. So my goal with these doc talks is to publish one per month. Uh, we went on a little bit of a hiatus and I was, I managed to get three or four out in 2022. And I would like to do way more than that, especially because these are just short, sweet, quick interviews for people to watch is like you're driving to practice or as you're on the pool deck, whatever it is that you can do. So what we're going to be doing at the end of this call, and I'll talk about this a little bit more as we're going on is I will send out a jot form. And basically what'll happen is, you know, before before we get you involved with the doc talk, I just want to talk to you, make sure you're comfortable with being on camera, make sure you're excited to do this. You know, I don't want to take all 75 of you in the group. I know there's not 75 on here, but I don't want all 75 of you to sign up and then not be able to use all of you. So the goal would to be, you know, to get five or six people to be in that rotation and try to publish, like I said, about once a month. So I think of it as a very fun way to get out there, to meet new coaches. Um, we have some awesome people who were doing it that unfortunately had to step away just due to lack of time. So that's something that I'd really like to grow and to expand as we're going forward. So I think that covers Doc Talks pretty well. Jen, is there anything you'd like to add in there? Uh, no, I think you covered it. Yeah, okay. it's exciting to kind of open it up to you guys to the, the idea being that you're going to know coaches that we, you know, yep. the, the broader the network, the more points okay. of view, the more experience, uh, mm -hmm. different types of experience that we can bring in. So um, that's the whole idea to, to, to get out there and engage all of you and your networks and yeah. uh, coming up with some really awesome dog talks. Discussing and one of the discussions on coaching. So I exactly. And I was going to say, one of the big perks of that is that I will typically come on. I'll do all the recording, all the editing. I literally just need you to get out there and put your face on, on the video and not mine. <laughs> so that would be my big ask. Yeah, and find the, the, uh, the yes, subjects find that you the Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think before what we did was we had a really nice spreadsheet where we were able to track each of the speakers. Everybody was talking via email. It was really nice. And like I said, I'd really like to get that up and going again. So um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself. I unfortunately can't see all of you because I'm sharing my screen, but feel free to hop in if you've got any questions. Uh, Abby. Hey, just real quick. These are great ideas. And I think, um, you know, these talks are very, very helpful. Um, my... I, this may not be related, but I just a suggestion. Um, is there a way just to a short, quick interview? Like you said, even driving to a practice or quick on deck interviews, because with a now day and age, like one minute video is kind of captures most people's attention. Mm -hmm. yep. um, you know, simple, like we can have a frame of questions, like real yep. quick answer these questions within, you know, 30 seconds and with yep. a 45 second frame. Um, I think that will capture not only 
coaches, but also getting a lot of information out to the swimming community at large. Um, just again, with the younger generation, you know, the TikToks are just really <laughs> uh, resonate with them. So some, <laughs> some to think about and, and might engage a larger audience. Yeah, that's definitely a good idea. I'm definitely open to that for sure. Because I mean, that's even great for social media because I can do something like that and grab everybody's attention versus like going in, taking cuts. Like it just, it's possible. It just takes a little bit longer. Or or even just do a like a scissor reel for one of like doc talks, right? And so you have an hour long or 50 minute long talk and then you do that 30 minutes and post it on the social media um, and then just kind of like a preview of a shortcut of something. Mm -hmm. Yep, that would be the goal if we got those longer ones too. Thank Great you. Great idea. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Abby, I want to Abby, I want to say that I think we did something similar to this maybe 10, 12 years ago. It may have been a um, you know, favorite breaststroke drill. Mm-hmm. And then yes. it was like seven or eight different coaches. I think if anybody else remembers that. That will be awesome. Like I know people looking to quick, I, I, I sh- this term may be in, in, in accurate, like quick fix, right? Mm-hmm. Quick ideas, um, but more, more, more the purpose is really sharing ideas, right? Like last night, I'm in a chat with a group of four coaches and hey, like this coach text me, text us and saying, I needed some inspiration for breaststroke and I am said I'm, I need to do tomorrow morning. So all of us just jumped in, shared our workouts and then you can take a piece and you can, you know, modify, you can twist however you want. Mm-hmm. But at least it sparks that conversation, sparks some of creation in there. Um, and I think, you know, like you said, favor, favor brushstroke drills or favor brushstroke sets. Like what is your stroke count versus the time uh, set look like, right? Something like that, right? And just quick, quick 30, 40 minutes. And in a subject of, okay, this week we're targeting brushstroke. Okay, well, this week we're targeting you know, streamline, like what are the favorite things you do um, are different approaches and then put it all together. Yeah, I think those are good ideas. Now you're making me think like you can put it on your Instagram story and have people vote. Yes. Oh, here's the top of the top. Of it. Mm-hmm. W- w- widespread, yeah. Yeah, that would be interesting because then people could really vote and hone in on what they wanted. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, any other input before Trevor? Asked? Trevor has his hand up. Yep. Yeah, so I'll put my hand down real quick. So, um, so two things. One, um, on Aska's YouTube page, I, there's, I don't know if you want to turn it into a doc talk. Um, it's one of the first videos on there. There's actually an interview that's like an hour and a half long that I did with Jim Ellis in 2020 um, about the importance of um, race and ethnicity and diversity in, um, in, in our sport. You want to, you, you already own it. <laughs> so yeah, turn that into a doc, tur- you know, chunk it out, turn it into a doc talk. But um, but also to kind of go into um, but also to kind of go into what Gordy and just to back- backpack off of that, you did that um like a few years ago, mm-hmm. and I remember specifically going on and saying, yeah, you know, these are some drills that you can do to work on breaststroke. These are some drills, and I mean, even if it's just a quick snapshot of a of a practice, mm-hmm. right? Almost like almost like what you can do on swim swim where you can log on and see um you know you can see a practice and then underneath there's the comments and the notes of what of what the coaches were thinking and doing i think that would just be something really really quick and easy to do just to have a coach talk through okay we're warming up doing this these are some drills that i like this is the goal to practice etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah, that's very similar to the workout Wednesday. I know we were doing that for a while. So, I mean, if people are able to contribute to that and keep it going and keep it moving, I would definitely be open to to keep posting that. The biggest thing that I'm going to tell you guys that I have trouble with is getting the content in. You know, I don't have nearly as large of a network as most of you do. So the more content that you can feed towards me and the more people you can send my direction, Jen can tell you this. I'm on my phone 24-7. It's one of my... It's one of my faults. So if you can, you know, the more people you send my way to make things like that happen, I'm always willing to do the editing. And we do have an awesome social media intern to help us out as well. So those are definitely great, great suggestions. What will be a best way to have a two-way interactions? Like, for example, if you post a question on IG going, hey, what's your favorite mm-hmm. uh, approach to, you know, high elbow freestyle catch or, you know, early, early, um, early form catch? Um, uh, early vertical forearm catch. Mm-hmm. And then 
but on Instagram, you cannot send videos, right? And unless right. you go, hey, DM me this. Right. And that may, be, that may be a good way to do it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you get the consensus to share, like just on the DM right. immediately, automatic message pop up and, you know, you mm -hmm. agree to share your content um, by sending this information to me. Mm -hmm. And then you can compile, um, maybe just kind of like what, um, you know, ask me anything question type of exactly. function yep. on your story or on your um, post. Right. I think that's something we definitely have to tap into because there's so many things that we get sent on a daily basis and I'll try to share it on our story as much as possible. But yeah, that's definitely, the, I think that's definitely the route to go. The problem is that it disappears after 24 hours unless you save it. So I just got to remember to save all of it. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, these are all great. I mean, if we can do all that, that would be... That would be optimal. So um, is there anything else on Doc Talks or any of the social media stuff before we go on? Those are all, like I said, great input. No, the only thing I was going <clears> to <throat> mention is you mentioned the YouTube video um, with the channel aspect of things. Is it possible just to make each one of those things just a different channel on YouTube? That way, because you typically when you're creating it, Mm -hmm. you're linking it to your instagram can you just right. make convert it to a youtube video assuming they do the the disclosure form or whatever you have to have them do so that you can repost under your channel yeah that's a good question i've never i've gone from youtube to instagram but i've never gone the opposite direction i'm sure it's a possibility i'll look into it though after the call to confirm um i know with the doc talks themselves and i know you're talking more of the snippets on instagram but i know the doc talks we want to make for credits so we want to get those in our learning management system mm -hmm. but something basic like this that we can be putting onto youtube i don't see why we couldn't figure out a solution there and i think we ought to we ought to look at how do we want to set it up if we're going to do it for the right. um the educational units mm -hmm. let, let's come up with categories that we want to do like age right. group fly senior fly mm -hmm. you know age group planning senior planning those those types of things um and i think that would be really and i think i think the broader the range of stuff we have Mm -hmm. I think we'll get more people that buy into it. And that's really the bottom line is we want people coming back right. and viewing those. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, if that's something where people would be interested in coming up with, oh, you know, the calendar of, hey, let's try to target this. Hey, let's target that. I'm definitely open to, to getting that kickstarted. I would be happy to volunteer to help do things for like the younger age group kids. Okay. Um, that's like, I went to the ASCA clinic and one of the biggest conversations I had with other coaches was they didn't feel like there was enough mm -hmm. um, information for like the 12 and unders, the 10 and unders. Um, so I would agree with, I think it was Gordy that was talking about making sure we differentiate between like the younger and the older kids. Yes, I agree. Um, so I would gladly volunteer my time to kind of jump in and create mm -hmm. categories or a calendar of some kind to yeah. help support that. I think that would be great. I mean, I don't know if it's something where, and we can talk about this more in a separate call so we don't take up the whole time, but you know, I don't know if it's a weekly thing. I don't know if it's a daily thing. I think daily is a lot, but coming up with that more concrete plan, I think would be definitely a great idea. Ariel, <clears throat> Kate is uh, someone that we could lean into for social media stuff. She, she has a really good handle on it. Okay, cool. And by the way, that comment about providing more content for younger ages, uh, younger age group swimmers and coaches is, is one we have heard. We really tried hard to provide it at World Clinic, and I discovered that whatever we provided still wasn't enough. So there's definitely a thirst out there for that content. And so, yes, we are really going to work to to find that content. So Kate, I really, I appreciate you yeah. stepping up. We will, we will definitely be in touch. Yes, for sure. All right. Yeah, that, that'll be, the more we can get that going, the more, the better off we're all going to be. So I'll take, I'll take all the help I can get. All right. Anything else on this? I'm, I'm glad that you guys are all very active. I appreciate it. Is there, Ariel, is there a way we can get, um, email addresses for people? Yes, I can definitely do that. Okay. I think I had BCC'd everybody on the initial 
uh, email, but I can definitely just throw everybody on too. Okay, thank One you. Yep, of course. All right, so anything else on Doc Talks? Going once, going twice. Excellent. All right. So um, we kind of alluded to this already, I think, earlier in the call. But the next thing that I would like to tackle is doing transcripts from World Clinic. Um, I've heard from past years that there's been, I think it was what a book was created, Jen, and sold to everybody. Your book, mm -hmm. Your book was created and sold to everybody. So we did get all of the talks that were in the main stage. They were all video recorded and all of the breakout sessions minus the paid schools and one I got one talk that was like three quarters of the way on the recording, but I did get all of those recordings. I ran them through our Otter trans, uh, transcription company. And I don't know, have you guys ever used Otter before? Are any of you aware of it? It's a great software, yeah. but yes. it's come up with some funky words. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got like 30, um, 30 different talks that are going to need to be uh, listened to or watched and then the transcription compared to them. So that is something that um, I know a lot of people have been asking about the yearbook. I know that's something that's really important to the ASCA community. So if I could get a couple of people who would be interested in listening, um, I, I've already got most of the transcripts done. I'm hoping to have them all done by Monday. I just have to run a couple through, a couple more through Otter. But um, if you're interested <laughs> in listening and reading, I would gladly take, again, you know, five or six people who would be interested in and checking the accuracy of otter because otter doesn't like swimming words sometimes which is ironic to me i'll, I'll be a part of that all right i'll put you down for that happy. yeah ariel i i've done it before for past ask the clinics i'd be happy to do it again all right and yep. who said that because i couldn't see your name oh mike Llewellyn. mike you can put you. kate on there too um okay. pat pat will do it also pat okay i've got all of you on there perfect and Ariel. just a reminder that after this call, Ariel is going to send an email to everyone with a link to where you can sign up for everything. So don't feel like if we miss you, please yeah. do that as well, just in mm -hmm. case, make sure we catch everybody what you're volunteering for. Yep. Just Ariel, just for future references, um, my wife actually works for Google and Google oh. has live captioning um, mm -hmm. function. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so like, you know, you can just turn on um, the video and then just have the live live captioning going um i believe youtube does that from time to time mm -hmm. like some of some are most actually youtube are actually pretty accurate um in terms of uh, trans, uh um the transcripts yeah i i youtube was going to do it and then actually our learning management system is going to do it too and then they rolled back the feature so eventually mm -hmm. it's going to be on my agenda to get transcripts for all of the levels i'm not going to throw that on today's agenda but <laughs> yeah the, the more that we can do because like i said as much as you use these live transcriptions sometimes sometimes i just don't like the swimming words <laughs> so <laughs> but thank you for those those are helpful to know so you said that was google and youtube yeah live, it's called live captioning Perfect. I've got that down. So, okay. Um, I know that the goal that I have on here is December 1st. So hopefully that'll give everybody enough time. I'm not going to give, you know, one person 15 videos to watch because that's just mm -hmm. insane. But just so that you're aware. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty straightforward. But does anybody have any questions about that before I go forward? All right, going once, twice, sold, okay. All right, so Jen, again, she also alluded to this at the beginning of the phone call, but I know that we had a lot of people who were beta testers for level one and for level two, and I got some extremely valuable feedback. So if you were some of those people, thank you so much, because you know that did make a difference in the course. I was able to find errors, mistakes, you know, um, as Jen said, it is very easy to go in and to make corrections, but as you can probably imagine, staring at the same course for so many hours, you do miss things. So at this point, I have not had the chance to get any beta testers into level three. So what I'm looking for is some quick turnaround time with this beta testing because it did go on sale for SCA, for Swimming Coach Appreciation Week. And we did have, I think we had a good number of purchases. I want to say we had almost 100 purchases at this point just for level three. So hopefully before anybody gets in and gets too far through it, I'd really like to have some testers go through, you know, find those mistakes, find those errors. If there's continuity issues, basically what I'm asking you to look for is, you know, I will definitely take like, if I have grammar mistakes, fine, great. Tell me about it. I'm looking for more 
where is there a hole? Where was there a gap? What did I miss? What didn't I think of? You know, um, like we told you earlier, Mike and Mo wrote the course. They did a great job, but I think there's always things that we can add and there's always ways to make it better. So if there's something earth shattering, or like I said, if you think we missed something, you know, please feel free to tell us and please feel free to let us know. We're looking for that deep, substantial feedback. You know, my feelings aren't going to be hurt. Trust me. <laughs> like I said, I spent too many hours staring at it. Like, say what you got to say, do what you got to do. We want to make this the best for everybody and the best for all the coaches. So that is something, again, I'd really like some quick uh, turnaround on. So I would love to get feedback again, four or five, six people minimum to go through the course by October 21st. I do realize that is next Friday. That is a quick turnaround. At this point, I want to say the course is no more than six hours. I think six is on six is on the long side. Six is on the very long side. Um, it's, I think in total, Dave sent me, Dave sent me the transcripts the other day because what we did was we had the written content and then we also recorded it so that people could listen to it. So all of the listening material for chapters one, two, four, five, and six was only 25 minutes. And then the rest are videos. And then chapter three is our big, big breakout. But again, it shouldn't be more than six hours. It's not anything extremely long. Like the last one, it's not 500 pages. But um, again, if there's four, five, six people that would be interested, I will give you a coupon code to go into the store. I'll follow you up with that email, give you all the instructions. But this is something that I probably should have, first put, should have put it first on the docket, but this is probably the most important thing we've got on here, at least in my opinion. Yeah, and the most urgent to get yes. done quickly, yeah. I mean, you know, the 21st is the deadline I have in mind. Like, if you're going to be able to get it done by the 22nd, I'm not going to complain or anything. But, you know, the sooner we can get that feedback, the better. All right, Gordy. Step up, Gordy. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it. it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I can do it. All right, all right. man. Look at all these volunteers. I was going to say, so I see Pat. I heard Mike. I heard Gordy. Who else? Bill Thomas. Bill Thomas. Guy. Hi. And Guy. And Guy. And Guy. All right. Perfect. I will follow up with you on that one just so that we can make sure to get those out to you. Um, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping everything looks great. I put it all out there. A video editor did a great job. But again, like I said, just give it to us. <laughs> give it to us. <laughs> Tell us how to fix it. <laughs> Tell us how to improve it. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions about that? Um, all of the exams should be in there. I think everything's in there at this point. So if I'm missing anything, Mike, I guess that would be, I guess you're going to be the one to tell me which charts I forgot and which, which downloads. <laughs> we'll, we'll go through it again. All right. Sounds good. Um, any questions or anything about the level three beta testing? Patricia, thanks so much for coming today. Appreciate it. Yep. Hey, anytime, anytime. I just have a 1230 schedule. That's actual, like my mm -hmm. job job. So I got to do that. <laughs> All right. Thank Thanks you everybody. Coming. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Bye. To see you. All right. Perfect. Okay. So I think we're good there. All right. So moving on to the next item here. So as Jen mentioned, we are finally done with levels one through five. That is something that we've been working on since I was hired here a year ago. So I can't tell you how happy I am to finally be finished with those. Um, with that being said, we are looking to move forward and to create more courses. So, you know, a lot of the courses that we had, as Jen mentioned, are older, they're outdated. I'm in the process of moving some over. I'm in the process of moving some over and making them archived courses. So archive courses would be free courses that are available to any ASCA member just because they are a little bit older. Um, we're still working on finalizing that list, just making sure, you know, dotting our I's, crossing our T's, making sure everything's good on our end. Um, but basically, you know, I, I used to coach, right? Like I've coached up until this point in time until I came on with ASCA, but I'm not the one who's out there on the pool deck anymore. So what I'm looking for are ideas for courses. So, if, you know, if I could get another I don't know if I want to be as ambitious and say I'm going to another five courses out in a year, but you know, if we could get another one, two, three courses lined up for the next year, year and a half, two years to start working on, that would be the ultimate goal. But you know, you are the, all the ones that are out on the pool deck. You're the ones that have the knowledge. What do you want to see be made and be offered through ASCA? So that is kind of my next ask to you. So I would be, when I send out the follow-up email, I have a whole slot in there. Again, hit me with your ideas. I'm happy to hear whatever 
whatever ideas and go from there. We can vote on them. I don't really care how we handle it, but getting those ideas in, I think is extremely important. I think if we, if we look back over the stroke schools mm -hmm. and, and have it kind of a dual, here is the age group approach, you know, as far as teaching the strokes, and mm -hmm. then here is the senior approach okay. and the training apart. <laughs> Yeah, idea. I will say the um, the stroke schools are on Russell's docket and I we don't have an ETA on those as of yet, but I'll definitely take that idea to him as he's redesigning. And I know there's I took like the the coaching eight and unders mm -hmm. course like years ago. I don't know if there's anything with that that could be updated or added to, but, mm -hmm. you know, we could look into that one and see. I think I took it three or four years ago. Yeah, I think that's one of the books that we're looking into and looking at and seeing if we're going to continue offering it or if it needs to be mm -hmm. updated. So, but definitely, I mean, I really liked that one. Okay, that's good to know. I still have the book. I like yeah. still look at it. <laughs> one thing, one thing that that I have heard is age group planning and the transition from age group into senior. Those have been two two things that a lot of coaches have questions about. Okay. Because in in a lot of areas, the the jump from your age group program to your senior program is just this massive gulf. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, so how do we better bridge that? Okay. And Karen, that's Gordy. That's a really good sub a good subject. I actually I was approached and many times because I was coaching. Um, I coached the uh, age group for ten plus years. And then transition to um, the senior group. Um, a lot of there's a lot of similarities, and there are also a lot of um, differences and, and different stimulations. Um, if we like have a foundation with what what is the must for both across the board um, similarities, and what are the the differences, right? Um, like having, I think it's a little bit easier for the eyes if we have like a chart system, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously with the context um, later, like added later, but with a chart system, I think it's a little bit easier to identify them, categorize them, and then, you know, going into develop, uh, you get the interest at first and then um, going into a little bit deeper in detail, taxes, uh, Texas. Yeah, for sure. And something else, and I'm, I mean, this is just something that I've been dabbling into is also just working on more about like integrated periodization as well for seniors. Um, just to make, just to make it so that way you can talk about, you know, here's kind of not just preemie conditioning when you're in your early season aerobic phase, but also things that you can start talking about psychology in terms of like meat prep and meat ideas and kind of always planning with the end in mind and also nutrition kind of at the beginning of the season, middle of the season, end of the season. I'm reading a really good book on it right now. But, um, you know, if we could talk about, you know, if we could, if we could, I don't know, maybe hook up with Erica Biney, talk to her about, you know, in terms of nutrition. Um, you know, Goldberg is a huge Ask a supporter. You know, he'd be more than happy to talk to people about, you know, here's what you can talk about early, mid, postseason meet, stuff like that. So... You know, just something that I've, you know, I've, I've been thinking about it and something I've been doing with my guys and it's been really well, it's worked really well. Yeah, I think that would be a really nice build because we, we dabbled very, very lightly in level one. We did like a, oh God, I had a really cool name for the chapter, um, but everything outside of the pool. So it started hitting on open water, nutrition, dry land. And I think we did a little bit of sports psychology, but it was just a very surface level. So taking that a step further, I definitely agree it would be an excellent idea. And another idea that, um, and I, I had to do this for my master's, so I've taught this course already, so I'd be more than willing to okay. help, help you develop it, was also helping um, coaches developing their philosophy and their mm -hmm. coaching and leadership philosophies. Yep. Because that was one of the things that I know when I first started was really, really tough for me and right. figuring out why I'm doing this and where I want to go with it. Mm -hmm. Definitely another good idea because I think that's the hardest part sometimes <laughs> figuring yeah. out how to put that into words. I had a conversation with a young coach at ASCA this year 
And I was rather surprised to find out that he didn't know who Peter Dayland and Doc Councilman were. Um, I think one of the things that our sport does in general is not teach our history. Um, I, I know I've talked to some younger coaches and I've, from reading the stuff that ASK is putting out now, there's a lot of reinventing the wheel going on out there. Okay. Um, stuff that, and maybe I was lucky, but the stuff that I was exposed to as a swimmer back in the 50s and 60s is now being presented as new and exciting. Um, so I, I don't know, something, something has to be done, I think, about maintaining a history of our sport uh i know we have the hall of fame mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of people that access that right uh, and I, I i'd like to see something done with that i had a young man come to me and say that he found a drill that was really helpful he did he created this drill because his swimmers were kind of short on the front of their stroke and he talked about how he would have them put their hand in and then put the other hand on top and then take a stroke, come back and put the hand on top again. And I almost didn't have the heart to tell him that it's called catch up stroke. But the, the great thing is he didn't know about that stroke and he invented it. And so I, I encouraged him to go on with that kind of mindset in his career. But I also found out that there really wasn't a history of where to get that information from in the first place. Yep. Well, Mike, that's, that's great feedback. And that's something that, um, you know, that's some feedback that both Jennifer and I received in the last couple of weeks. And uh, we, we certainly want to connect the younger coaches to our history, uh, our great legacy of all of the great coaches who have left, you know, an indelible impact on the sport. So your comment there is very well received. That's something that's important to us. Oh, not, not, not to be insulting or anything, but uh, I was talking to, to, to Greg Troy and um, I think, for instance, last, uh, this last Olympic cycle, uh, why wasn't the coach of the year the guy that, that taught Caleb Dressel how to swim, how to swim butterfly, how to have a love for the sport? I think sometimes our coach of the year guy is the is the one coaching the the six foot tall ten year old. <laughs> Hi, Gordy. And uh, and and it's not you know we don't look back and see who is the guy that helped to create these fantastic Katie Ledeckis, these fantastic kids that have come along over the decades. Um, I've told my swimmers for decades now that. You know, I'm not going to know if I was successful with you until you're in your 30s or past because the things we have to teach in this sport have so much more to do than how you touch the water. Um, but again, I'm just a little old country swim coach. I don't really know a whole heck of a lot. Mike, Mike, those, that's a great, great suggestion. Mike actually recognized uh, who started them, right? Um, just to share... Uh, Chinese swimming recently started doing it. I think it was uh, three, four years ago at a national championships. Not only the athlete gets on the podium, their coach gets on podium and their very first um, elementary coach gets a uh, award as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, I thought it was really, really great to uh, encourage that grassroots. Yeah, and that's, that is a discussion we've been having. We, as a matter of fact, are going to convene a committee to talk about how we award the age group coach of the year uh, and what the criteria are for that. Um, because that what you've been saying, Mike, has come up by several people. And we do need to find a way to honor that coach that brought up a kid in the early days before they became, you know, the Michael Phelps or Katie Ledecky. One suggestion that I have for a, a new course that I that I think would be incredibly received well is um, the various types of equipment and how to implement it. I mean, we have all the we have all of these new things. You know, it's just you know using equipment in in training course. You know, something like that. 
Yep. And I, I, I think a lot of, you know, there, there's it's only the, one book that I know that talks about. That. Seriously, his, huh? his video library on how to use like finesse paddles and stuff like that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> it's, that's a genius idea. Come. Okay. Yeah, I think that'd be great. The more people using gear and equipment, the better. By the way, I just have to say, it's not just the coaches, the newer coaches that don't know the history, but I was with the Cincinnati Marlins uh, a couple days ago. I visited them, which is my home team. And um, so I talked to some of uh, three different groups of swimmers and Mary T. Maher was a Marlin, right? And I, she, sw she was a teammate of mine when I swam. And so I'm talking to these kids and I said, well, you of course know who Mary T. Maher is, right? <laughs> and they didn't, none of them, not one of them had heard of Mary T. Maher. She's from their very team. So there you go. I would be happy to help create the historical course. Um, I actually created like a Jeopardy game for my 10 and under kids to play during swimming. And a lot of it is just the history of swimming and like different people, different coaches, mm -hmm. things like that. So I would be happy to help put that one together. Thank you. Ariel, do you ever get feedback on the, um, the five levels in terms of like the things that are most often missed or people request after going to those five different areas? Um, just because a lot of things we're mentioning are kind of specific to stroke or whatever, sure. like the things that are more leadership or more administration, do you get questions that people kind of send you back and say, you know, when they do the reviews of the course? Yeah, at this point, we haven't had any really major. It's mostly just been, this is so great. Thanks for the new. Yeah. It hasn't really been anything substantial. Um, I do need to link some of our surveys. I think right now they get it via yeah. email, but I think if I link it into the course and have them, you know, immediately do it upon completion, that might help a little bit too. Well, that might give you some information as to what mm -hmm. ideas to go with, what, what there's a flavor for. Right. I mean, that's like the age group thing that was mentioned earlier, you know, that might capture that need for those courses right. um, from those different areas. Right. That's a good idea. Yep. We could, that'll be very quick and easy to get in. Mm -hmm. Perfect. These are all great ideas. I mean, this is why, you know, this is why this committee is great because some of these ideas, like I would never have even thought of. So thank you. For By the me. way, this is not necessarily this committee, but if anyone's interested, we are also looking for volunteers to help with our hall of fame on the website. When we moved, started moving over all the information from the old website to the new and looked at each individual one, we realized a lot of them are either written poorly or lack information or aren't, aren't there at all uh, or didn't have a photo. They just weren't consistent, weren't what they should be. Um, and so that's why they aren't on the new website yet is because we we're really trying to make them really much better and really high quality with a photo. If we have a video, we're adding a video. We want to make sure the bio is well written and we're putting them up one and going through that project. So if anyone's interested in helping with that, um, I will, I will help with that. Oh, cool. <laughs> awesome. Kate, hey, you're going to get yourself overextended here. Say, <laughs> yes. So that's no, it's okay. So I, I write, I'm a professional writer. So this is like all stuff that I do for my oh day my job. Gosh. So I help, like I help people create online courses. So it's what I do all day, every day. And I write websites. Okay. I help people write books. Oh so God. any, I get giddy Thank over you. writing stuff. <laughs> so you're really going to like my next topic of discussion then. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. Um, anything else on the courses while we're still up here? Nope. All right. There's plenty of ideas. If you think of something later, um, I think Jen and I are always, you know, we're sitting in bed or in the shower or watching TV, you know, places we're not supposed to be thinking about work. That's where the best ideas come from. You will have that job form to submit those ideas. So feel free, even if you think of it, you know, three weeks from now, a month from now, submit it. I don't care. I'll take it. So, all right. This is kind of a specialized request here for item number five. So Kate, you kind of hit it, hit the nail on the head there. Um, basically what I'm looking for, and this is just a general plea, I don't know if anybody would be interested in this, but um, as you all know, I, I write the courses, I run the learning management system, the website, you know, I'm always looking for people to help me keep the learning management system updated. 
I know that that can sound very overwhelming and intimidating, especially if some of us aren't the most, you know, tech savvy people and that's okay. Um, but, you know, just basically going in, seeing what I'm missing. Like, I know that when I moved over the Ask a Talks library, I think I moved over something like 500 and some odd titles. And I know that I just moved the titles over. Like I could put bios in, I could put in, there's a lot of more, there's a lot more cleaning up that I can do, but this would be a very specialized task because you would be going into our back end. This would be something where I would want a longer term commitment, you know, like a six month commitment because you would have to learn the system. You'd have to learn where to go, how to do it. It's not scary and it's not difficult once you're in there, but it is, you know, it's it's the heart of basket courses. So I can't just have, I don't want to have all 75 of us in there. You know, I want like one person, maybe two to help with that. So if that is something that you're interested in, and if you want to expand on that more, that's something that I would be more than happy to hop on a personal phone call with you and go over. Um, this is something that I, it's really fun in my mind. I'm sure some of you are like, ew, no, it's not, but it really is. It just, it takes time and it takes effort. And I mean, you know, right now in there, we've got, we've got so many chapters, so many courses and one person, it's almost impossible to keep them all clean and cataloged. So if that's something you're interested in, like definitely let me know because I would love somebody to work with. Um, alternatively, and Kate, I will specifically say this to you, you know, if you know somebody who wants to intern, if somebody's going to school for this, if you have a swimmer who's really interested in this, you know, that would be something that I would definitely love. And Rick, I know you're with the university. Like I tried to get a partnership or an internship going with my university. It unfortunately hasn't happened yet, but if you know somebody who would like to intern, if you can think of somebody, if it's whatever it is, a student, a swimmer, um, definitely send them my way. I would love to have a conversation with them just because this is a massive task. Um, I'm glad that we completed it in the time that we did, but there's always ways to improve it. So um, are there any immediate questions about that? Like I said, that's more of a specialized uh, position here, but still. Nope. All right. Yeah. If you just keep that in the back of your mind. And like I said, I'm happy to take other people, other suggestions, you know, um, and work with others. So, all right. On to the next one. So ask a live involvement. So Jen talked about this at the beginning of the course. So ask a level four and ask a level five, they are webinar based. The way it works at this point in time is that you go in, you watch a static video from Jeff Breaker for level four, and then you are required to attend, I believe it's two optional webinars of your choice. And then you have to attend, I think one mandatory. And then level five, you have to attend three Ask a Lives. There are specific topics, there are specific, um, there, it's a very set schedule of items. But as we mentioned before, you know, I'm only one person, I don't have the biggest network. So basically I'm looking for people that would be good at talking on topics related to leadership and talking about topics related to administration. I do have a very set specific list. I'm not gonna put them up right here and now for you, but I'm looking for people that might be interested in doing those Ask Alives. Um, they are once a month. We would love for you to commit to two. And Jen, I think at this point, we have them sign a contract and we are offering a small <coughs> gift, card. gift card. Yeah, at this point. So to incentivize people to come and help us because I can't unfortunately get up there and talk for all and, the, and obviously the people that we, the coaches or it could be others, could be experts in the field because it's dealing with administration um, and leadership. Mm -hmm. um, but there are people like that you would really admire that you feel like are you know role models and have a lot to bring because they're really teaching that webinar at that level, at that level four or five. Mm -hmm. So um, we're looking for your idea. We do have a lot. We have many scheduled for the coming year. We don't have every slot scheduled, um, but we want to keep it um, fresh and new ideas and different perspectives and so forth. So that's why we're throwing it out there for our suggestions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have somebody, like if you're interested or if you know somebody who's interested, that's great. I'm more than happy to initiate that contact, but I would ask that, you know, if you do know somebody, if you could just give them a heads up that a girl from Detroit's going to be calling them and the caller ID is going to say William Hodges, that would be great because 99 times out of 100, if I just cold call or just cold email somebody, they will not get back to me. So, you know, any help that you can give me in that department would be greatly, uh, greatly appreciated. I think one of the, you know, and I don't know if this is the right place for this, but for the administration piece mm -hmm. of it, one of the things that coaches could really use a lot of help with is how to interact with other coaches 
at the LSC level, mm-hmm. you know, especially when you're talking about Hasa delegates, those kinds of things, mm-hmm. because that tends to be a huge issue. Mm-hmm. So that's actually something I think Kathleen's going to touch on when she does the um, go- governments and leadership in the sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll definitely pass that comment. That's a great point. Somebody also brought that up about World Clinic for next year as a topic for a speaker. So that, that's something that we've, we've heard that feedback before. Thank you. Yeah, and just so you know, so Kathleen is scheduled to do the level four governance and leadership uh, Ask Alive next Wednesday. So anyone who wants to join that, it's open to all members, just like all Ask Alives. But the idea is that if you are if you are, if any member can attend, but if you have purchased the level four class, you will get credit for that towards your level four course completion. Uh, and then on the 26th, the following, no, the 20, 20 yeah, it's the 26th. 26th. Yes, that 26. is right. <laughs> the, 20, the following Wednesday is Ian Murray and Mike Cotter talking about um, budgeting. Well, budgeting, and that would be a level five category. So anyone who's pursuing their level five would get credit towards their course completion on level five. But it will, again, be open to all members to attend. So you don't have to step up or volunteer throw anybody's name out right now in time, but just something to think about as we're finishing up this meeting. And again, stick it on the job form whenever you think of it. Um, any other questions about the Ask Alive's? I'm just kind of give you an idea too, in case you haven't been there, it's typically 40 minutes of talking where they're lecturing at people. And then it's typically 20 minutes of questions. We've had some people that it's super interactive throughout. We're pretty flexible as long as you stick roughly to the topic, but it's it's meant to be laid back. Typically we have anywhere from, I think like 15 to 75 people on the call. So not to give anybody stage fright, <laughs> but again, just kind of give you an idea of what you would be signing yourself or somebody else. Abby knows, Abby did an amazing Abby knows. Yeah. <laughs> I was scary, like, I, I mean, <laughs> for me, I'm, I prefer more in person and just making the eye contacts different and just talking to a screen. And just, I mean, obviously we should all by, by now used to it, but it's still that you don't have that energy feedback and it just mm-hmm. kind of hard to keep on going, so. Mm-hmm. But appreciate it. You did a great job. Yeah, you did great. And a lot of people have watched your your ask Thank a lot. You. Thank you. All right. So no other questions about Ask Alive. So basically what I'm going to do now is I know I want to get us out of here under an hour. So it's 12:55. That gives us five more minutes to take any other suggestions. Basically, you know, this is you can do it now, you can do it on the job form, but is there anything else that you all think that we should be tackling as a committee within, you know, the next six months to a year that maybe we haven't discussed, maybe we haven't touched on, um, just any great ideas that maybe you haven't had a chance to voice at this point in time? Um, one thing I kind of dealt uh, recently quite a bit is the topic of how club coaches talking with college coaches, how to okay. bridging that gap. And I think um, I'm not sure how to approach it, but, um, you know, obviously if we, who, all the coaches on this panel that who've been around for a long time and know a lot of college coaches, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, younger coaches and, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know, just inflammation or just, I, I have a young coach came to me and said, how do you talk to the coaches? And I said, well, I know these people already, but in the early, early years, I didn't really know what to say, but the contents can be um, about our training philosophy. Like one of the things that, you know, you have to develop early on in your, uh, in your coaching career. Um, and obviously you have a specific athletes that you describe with their trajectory and their path and the personality and how they connect with you um, and their, you know, future development, what you see. But um, I think that might be a really um good kind of topic to kind of tackle into okay yeah got it on here definitely for sure one of the things that that i think that um and you guys will remember this you know it's probably about 15 years ago flow swim was a huge thing that everybody locked into and it was and it and it kind of it kind of followed up with um what abby was saying it was just a short you know minute minute and a half video of something cool. Mm-hmm. You know, it could, it could be a practice posted with some, with the coach giving comments, 
but maybe that's something that outflows from the doc talks. Mm -hmm. But that was something that I, I know coaches everywhere would, would log on to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, going to have lunch with Garrett. Amazing. I'm going, that one. I'm going to have lunch with Gary McCaffrey today. And he was the one that started the flow swarming. So, yep. oh, well. okay. Nice. All right, any other topics before we wrap it up here? Like I said, no pressure now. We've got that jot form coming out. Um, I will I will hopefully get it out to you by the end of the day. Um, get the recording up on YouTube. Feel free to share the recording with anybody that you think would be interested in doing this. Um, you know, like I said before, the more hands that we can have helping, the better, the better everything is gonna be. So uh, Jen, do you have anything else to close it down? Uh, no, just thank, thanks again for jumping on. This was really, really good conversation. This is the type of thing we love doing is getting ideas uh, like this. So thank you so much. And we will definitely be in touch with all of you, especially the ones that volunteer for stuff about the specifics. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we're going to keep this committee going and building. Uh, we have like 70, 75 people that said they want to be on it so that's the group we're sharing information with will continue to grow the more we can get involved the better everything the better the this association will be and the better the coaching professional will be so that is our goal to keep people involved and keep developing new things uh, with your input so again thank you yeah appreciate your time i know it's busy during the, day, during the week all right all i think right. that's it thanks everyone okay, take thank care you. thanks guys